Oh my god, I'm so freaking tired. I'm so, I'm so tired, man. I, I just I barely slept. I did a flight last night. And uh, we're back, so welcome back, all my beautiful, fine aviation enthusiast friends. Welcome back to the best damn airplane show you ever going to watch on Sunday morning. Please click subscribe. Please click the thumbs up. It helps me out a tremendous amount. And uh, yeah, I'm tired as hell, but uh, I'm making the most of this weekend because during the week, it's really tough for me to do this. Not just make videos, but just play this simulator in general. And... Uh, yeah, man. So that's what we gonna do. And uh, hang on, let me just respond to this text message here that my mom sent. My son's turning 18 today, so she sent something that uh, kind of makes you look back on the whole 18 years. You know, now that he's uh, technically an adult. All right, let's go ahead and pick the right airplane. We're doing the A310 this morning. If you caught the show I did overnight, we flew uh, a Bay 146 from uh, the airport in Liverpool to the Black Hole, which is uh, now pretty much all of uh, the middle of Europe. <laughs> it's like as soon as you cross into Europe, your screens go blank. So, but we landed uh, from 11,000 feet in the air, just like we did in uh, Abu Dhabi. However, this time around, we actually landed uh, the airplane because we had old, old school um, instruments and shit like that. So we were able to do an ILS landing, even though everything was blank because we had old school equipment. All right, let's choose Frontier here. This is a little bit of a longer flight, but what the hell? Let's do it anyways. Let's do it. I don't think I like this frontier variation. We're doing a frontier flight today. Let me look at this. Let me look at this livery. I don't know if I really like this one yet. What does it say there? Chook what? Chinook. The gray wolf. Yeah, that's cool. It's got a wolf on the back. We could do that one. Yeah, let's do that instead of the regular delivery, which is the uh, regular Frontier. All right, let's start in uh, San Francisco today. Oh yeah, I got to look at what gate this motherfucker took off from. Hang on, let's go to the website and let's check it out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all can hear me. I haven't done my normal check routine to see if I can actually hear me. Let me, uh, let me pull up the seams real quick. Uh, exit full screen here. Let's go to Flight Aware. Let me put on my video real quick just to make sure I can hear myself. All right, I can hear myself. Good and Frontier 4310. What gate did this bitch take off from? Doesn't say. Very strange. Usually there's a gate. Sorry about your luck, bitch. Sorry about your luck, bitch. All right, well, we're taking off from one left, which is what this one here. So it's a uh, medium. That's small. What about you, you're small. You're small. Jesus Christ, where's all the medium? Where's the medium at? Let's see what this one is here. Oh, that's kind of far away. 
Got anything down here on the bottom? Small. 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 Everything is so fucking small. That's general aviation. I want general aviation. Alright, C3 looks good to me. We'll do C3. That's medium there, so when we back out, we're gonna be backing out. Alright, very good. Let's choose that. And then we'll contact the ATC and see what they say about which runway we going to be taking off from today. I mean, I'm so tired. I should be going back to sleep, man. But, like, I, I want to fly another plane. It's snowing does that. It's fucking awesome. All right. Off to another good start. Thanks to uh, Microsoft Simulator. Let's give it another try. Let's see. Things that make you go, hmm. When I was growing up, the, the Arsenio Hall show was a late night TV show, like like a like a late night talk show, and he had he always had this segment. Things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> so I'm wondering, man. Is it just me that has these stupid ass issues that I have no control over? Or is it everybody? Things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's terrible. You guys, you sure you don't want to see like Forza Motorsport instead or Lies of P or Car Mechanic Simulator, Train Simulator, anything but Microsoft Flight Simulator at this point. Let's choose something else. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm so tired of this shit not working. Mm, I just want to cry. That's <laughs> 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 not fair. <laughs> Yeah, this wouldn't happen on PlayStation. It probably would. PlayStation's not that much better. It might not be better at all, actually. I don't know. I know I didn't really. Well, I shouldn't say never. I, I did. Let's. I don't know if it was delivery that's the issue. Let's try again. But, uh. Yeah, I mean. PlayStation has its, its share of problems, too. Believe me. When uh, the construction simulator came out last year, the, the new version of construction simulator when that came out, that thing, that thing, I counted it, it crashed like 300 times over the course of a month. So it's not just Xbox. Hey, so far so good, yay. Sounds when 
it's like sh- when you first get into it and it's shutting down. I love how it sounds like the. It's really cool. Let's put some lights on. Lower lights. Above lights. Center lights. Go to El Capitan. A little bit of that. Let's turn you on. Flood. Come down here and we'll do the same thing for co pilot. All right, very good. In it, you. Go ahead and align our navigational systems. All our screens are still on. And let's click clear. Case foe. Case foe. Turn. Let's click align IRS so that can do its thing. We have K K Kos for our backup airport. Just in case we want to transition and identify as a different airport. In case we want to identify as a different airport. And let's see here, our flight today, let's go to the OFP. Our flight is FFT 4310. FFT. This plane should be getting ready to take off in real life. Cruising at 37,000 feet today. Come on, Craig. Jesus Christ. Let's go. <laughs> I did it again. Oh, my God. Three, seven, zero. All right. Very good. Our cost index is 52. That's a good number. That's the jersey of one of my favorite Ravens players, Ray Lewis. All right. 323 by 79 is the cruise wind. Let's plug in our descent forecast while we can. So let's go down to descent. Let's do 31,000 feet first. It's 1,000 feet is VO 884. Oh my God. All right, 308 by 84. And we got 10,000 feet. A three oh three thirty six. All right, very good. We'll do before we begin our descent. We'll plug in Denver's Denver's winds. There's no sense of doing it now because it's more likely to change. So that's pretty much all we can we're going to do right now until we get lined up. We still have three minutes left. In the meantime, let's get rid of some of the white lettering. 
So white lettering, white lettering's bad. So let's turn on our nav lights. White lettering's bad, boy. So let's turn off the galley lights. Let's turn oxygen lights off. Let's put on our signage. And let's arm our emergency lights. And that's it until that finishes getting lined up. Let's come over to our electronic flight bag. And let's plug in some of the pertinence today. Some of the pertinence. The pertinence say it's time to go back to the mountain. All right, we can do 181 passenger. So let's do that. Let's type that bitch in. I always find it easier just to type it in than dragging it. That's just me. You can do it how you want to do it. All right, cargo is 4.5. Four point five fuel. Our tasty fuel is thirteen point five. Mm, our delicious fuel thirteen point five. Our G fuel we have two oh eight six. in uh, kilograms? Hang on a second. Oh, no, I'm not. That's why. All right, kilograms. Realistic. Yeah, that should be on short. That's right. I never redid any of this after uh, realistic autopilot disconnect is yes. Link instruments, yes. Visual steering. Uh, yeah, that's why. Okay. That's better. 13.5. Payload is 14. Zero fuel weight. And, oh, it's really low, our takeoff weight here. Let's, uh, let's re enter this in. Maybe it'll. We have 4.5. And let's re enter our fuel. That's closer. Our takeoff weight on Simbrief is 119. However, our zero fuel weight is about 7,000 kilograms lighter. So that's accurate. All right, let's click apply. Has our nav been updated? Yep, weights of people. Well, thank you. It's so nice of you to tell us that. All right, we should be just about lined up. Once we finish getting the the FMS, you know, taken care of, we'll go ahead and turn the APU on and back up. Let's refresh for the METAR. Let's see what Taking off runway zero one, right? Yeah. Let me.
me just make sure that we have the the option on where the <clears throat> excuse me where the copilot responds. Uh, where is ATC? Yeah, that's where the copilot. Okay. All right, so the co-pilot will take care. Okay, let's go ahead and set our flight plan now that. Right, zero, one, right. Doing this departure here. And we're doing Mogi. Let's insert that in. And then from Mogi, we are doing Highway, so let's click this here. Let's click the airway button. Let me turn the volume down a little bit on that. I don't want them mixing in with the mixing in with my voice. It's my voice. Let's turn them down to like 15 real quick. We can always turn them up if we need to. Oh man, you move so fast. Good lord, stop moving so fast. Very good. All right, we have Q, 24, the BVL. From BVL, we are doing uh, J154. to ECH. TCH, we're going to camper. Oh, let's see if that is one of the options here. So let's go to star. We're landing at 34 right. Now it's been really snowy there today, so I'm setting up for an ILS landing. If it wasn't really snowy and shit like that, we probably would do an RNAV landing, but let's set up. And we can always change it on the way if the weather clears up, but. We're doing final, so we don't need to choose one of those. And uh, what did I say? Long Z2. So let's find that one. Go. And yep, camper right here. All right, insert. Let's get rid of any discontinuities. Clear. And put that. There, so let's click clear vector and let's clear that. All right, let's look at our flight plan real quick. Should be fine, but let's check it out anyways. There we got that. Off. Let's uh, get on this up arrow right here. And when we get to this waypoint right here, we're then going to switch into heading. We, we may be in heading mode by this point. As long as our screens are still on, we're going to switch into heading mode and keep going outbound from the airport. We're going to keep going out. And then once the glide scope gets to about here, we'll then make our U-turn back towards the airport. And as we get closer to lining up the, um, the course, 
then we'll switch it into approach mode or localizer, depending on which which one we can do. And then uh, you know we'll have the plane land. So that's the plan. Let's come over here. Let's click on runway length. Let's plug that in. Let's plug in our course. Runway heading 28, let's go to here. Our reverse weight is 112.6. Let's plug that in. <sighs> it didn't take. it was trying to click on something behind the screen. All right, and let's click Calculate. All right, let's get this finished set up here. So let's go back to init. We're almost done, and then we can go ahead and push back. Our fuel block is 13.5. Zero fuel weight is 99.1, and we have 26.3 for the CG. Let's do 99.1. That was actually a really good radio station when I was growing up. Played all the really good, good alternative music from the 90s. All right, 26.3, 99.1 HFS. 26.3. We'll adjust the trim after we get, you know, everything working on the airplane. All right, I believe that's it for in it. Yep, let's go to takeoff. And let's plug in our V speeds. So we have... We have 134, 136. Six. All right, let's close the uh, jetway. Make sure our parking brake is on. Let's remove the chocks. Doors are all closed. All right, let's get the APU fired up. So let's put on this here inner tank. Click our APU master switch. Let's click start and turn bleed on. And then once this gets fired up, then we can go ahead at that point and uh, pretty much uh, back up and get our engine started. We're pretty much ready to roll. We are going to be speeding up time a bit. We'll do 2x speed once we're in the air and uh, safely at our altitude. 900 miles is quite far. But I like basing these things off of, you know, real life, so. I know it didn't fly an A310 in real life, but it was an Airbus. It was an Airbus that, that is flying this morning, so that's what we're doing. All right, let's switch this back to Matt. Let's click uh, Constraints. And we'll put this one here on Matt. EPU is now firing up. There we go. We can 
actually hear it it's clicking on now. That's pretty cool. All right, very good. And we can now release the external power. Let's get rid of the external power here. Let's turn on our pitch switches our yellow dampeners and our avionics before we back up let's set up just a couple more little things so flex is 59 and v2 will add 15 to that so we have 165 I say 59 let's set our flex temperature and what is uh, 28 is our runway heading let's do 28 is our frame is 0.9 up. Let's come down here. Let's click on this and we'll go 0.9 up. There you go. That's pretty good. Let me look at, uh, see if we have any constraints with our altitude to take off with. Let me look at the chart. I will look at it together with you, but you can't pull it up on uh, inside the airplane here. So let's see if there's any constraints. Taking off from one left, picking up Mobe night. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no constraints. Very good. So what's our first stop? We have. Oh, we'll leave it at ten thousand for now. We'll we'll adjust it as we go up. All right, let's uh, let's get ready to push back. Decision height we'll put on it's minus five. All right, and let's turn on our beacon lights. Let's get rid of all the white lettering here. Our window heaters, our probe heaters. All right, and let's see how we got to back out. So we got to, well, we don't really have much room at all. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna have him back us kind of like, like an like a backwards S. So let's go ahead and get that screen up. Oops. All right, let's start by going this way. Remove our parking brake. And as we start moving, we'll click this S here. This S, that arrow. They really pack these airplanes in. flight is probably in the air in real life by now. I think it took off. Yeah, it's probably in the air by now. But we'll be in the air soon enough. All right, let's go straight. Normally I would start the engines by now, but I'm more worried about getting us to a point where we're not going to get this airplane here. This airplane with the, the truck in front of it that has some serious frame rate issues. All right, let's make this turn now. It's the wrong way, buddy. 
All right, let's go ahead and put on all our fuel tanks. now we'll back up a little bit more Go a little bit more this way of the of the uh, parts <laughs> all right we can stop here put our parking brake back on it's like it's like the the, the pushback cart look at them look at look, they were getting ready to attack us they were getting an attack formation <laughs> all right guys go back it's okay buddy we're, we're good we don't we don't Go ahead, just go, go back, go back. All right, very good. All right, let's start our engines up. Wow, I've never been almost attacked by parts like that before. All right, let's turn on you. It doesn't really matter which engine goes first. It's a simulator. I mean, it should matter being a simulator, but it doesn't usually matter. Why is the plane moving around? Is he bouncing and shit? Like, why is it doing that? All right, flight director's on, we have nav. Let's plug in our landing altitude. from our ILS chart. So our landing altitude is plane settles down, man. This really has me a little worried that we're, like, bouncing around and shit. The thruster's up? Flaps down, and then we'll test our takeoff configuration. All right, let's release the parking brake. All right, no whistles, noises, anything. Let's get out of here.
strobe lights on since it's dark outside still. And we never did set our METAR. Let's get it from the simulator. In real life, it's showing a, a METAR of 1025, 30.29. Thirty point two nine. Oh, oh my God! There's potholes here, and that scares the hell out of me because when we take off, man, we cannot afford to hit one of those potholes. I am really nervous about taking off here. Sometimes there's these invisible potholes on the, on the runway. And when you hit them going at very fast speeds, it tends to throw your nose directly into the concrete or asphalt or dirt or whatever the runway is that you're taking off from. But Can you hear me knocking? We'll hold short here and wait for clearance from the ATC.
right, let's go. The hell, all I did was just click the button once, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, come on. Come on, engines. Jesus Christ. And this thing has been wobbling. I really hope that we do not have any potholes on this runway. This is going to be a real short flight if that's the case. All right, let's give it a try. Right, Toga's been clicked. Listen to those engines. Mm, sounds so good. I, I knew it. Fuck this game, man. Fuck this game. Didn't I say it? Fuck you, game. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Fuck. I knew it. Didn't, did, you heard me call it. You heard me call it. Right? Didn't I say, man, I sure hope that there's no potholes on this runway that's going to throw our nose into the ground. Sure enough. As soon as we get rolling. God damn it, man. This game fucking is terrible sometimes. Let's, uh, let's see what Los Angeles has for departures. I still want to fly to Denver. Let's, uh, see what Kalax has. Man, so stupid. Some of the glitches that are in this game, man, for real. There's a 737 to Denver. There's a go to Portland, fly a Delta to Portland. see here Memphis JFK don't want to fly that far uh, Vancouver Cleveland Newark Miami Minneapolis one to Portland could be interesting we haven't flown to Portland before I'm still trying to fly to Denver, though. I guess we could do... All right. Let's see what... Um... Let's see what San Diego has. All right. Yeah, they have a, a frontier as well. All right, so let's rebuild this. Send it over to Sim Simbrief. Yeah, that's getting ready to leave here. Flight twenty eight eighteen. So let's go into Simbrief. I do all this over again. Why does why do they have such stupid errors and glitches in this game? Man, it sucks so bad. Really, man, especially like, I don't mind all the setup shit. I like setting up the airplane and all that, you know, but like, man, like, why do you have these stupid glitches? K 
KSAN to KDEN. I want to fly to Denver because last time I flew there, all the screens went blank on the, um, I think it was a Cessna Longitude, I think, or the PC, oh, it was a PC-12 that I was flying. All right, let's see, we got Zoo, Metball, Eid. A236 to TBC, Schnips, and T-Bar 3. All right, very good. Let's do that. The scheduled block time is 220. That's fine. We can do double the speed while we're in the air. Let's generate the flight. What gate's this thing at right now? 816, so let's do that. Let's go to, actually, we can just zoom out. Say gate 16. That's departure. And we have gate 16. not an actual gate that they have maybe it's that general parking one all right so we'll just do general parking 16. that doesn't seem like that's where it would be i'm down here to one of these here gates all right we'll just do this one here All right, let's, uh, did we do that? It's still, all right, that's good. Let's go to Navigraph so we can pick our approach. You gotta be fucking kidding me. All right. It's already sunny outside, so fuck. I was hoping to take off when it was still kind of dark out, like I did earlier this morning. That was really cool, flying, getting to cruising altitude, and then it being like the sun starting to rise. And that's cool to me. I like that. But it's all good. Got plenty of room here to fly. Uh, fly twice the speed as well. Plenty of straight lines. All right, let's go to approach. And we'll do this one here. All right, we can unload this. I'll pull it up on my tablet here momentarily on my iPad. Yeah, we've been doing this for almost an hour already. Almost an hour already. It's fucking crazy, man. All right, let's go ahead and let me make sure everything is still good with YouTube because I just got an error message thing saying that, uh, you, but I think that's just from... Oh, yeah, it's still working. Okay. Yep, we're good. We are good. Let me, uh, give me a second. Let me plug my phone into the charger. My phone's, my phone's on its, uh, last leg with the battery. Let's plug it in so we can... Give it new life. All right, let's bring up this control panel again. All right, let's open up Navigraph one more again. God, that sucks. All right, KSAN to Den. 
All right, we got that up now. Let's turn on some batteries again. Turn on the, turn on the lights. And I'm not worried about the jetway this time around. Just want to get in the air. So let's click in it. And actually, let's turn on some lights real quick. At least for the, the pedestal and shit, we can turn on the other lights when it's aligning. And we'll turn these on for now. All right, let's go ahead and align our navigation again. One, two, and three. It happens again. I'm going to say it's the airplane at that point, and it's not the, the airport. So let's see what happens again. it's happened that that same thing has happened to me at other airports with other planes so i don't really know if it's the airplane or just i don't i don't know i don't know what it is All right, align irs kcos is still our alternate kcos i believe that's for colorado springs Go. Put my I, my laptop back over here. Make sure it's still charging. Very good. Let me get comfortable because it's going to be a few minutes. Oh my god. Oh shit. There we go. Now I'm comfortable. Whew. Let's push some shit out of the way. Make some room. Give me some room, bitch. All right, very good. Let's go ahead and enter our flight ID. It's FFT 2818. So we have FFT 2818. Our flight level, again, is 37,000 feet. Cost index is 78. Cruise wind is 337 by 66. 337 by 66. Let's put in our descent forecast again. One more again. Let's do it one more time. Scroll down here. And we got 310. 31,000 feet, 310 by 335, 132, 335, 132, 20,000 feet, we have 313.85, so we have 3, 3.85, Let's do 10,000 feet. 30634. 84. The one for Denver will plug in right before we begin our descent. We'll plug in Denver. All right, that's good. Let's go to flight plan. We'll wait for everything to finish aligning. Go ahead and clean up some of this real quick. Let's put our flight recorder on. Anything with white lettering needs to go, by the way, so. Let's put on our nav lights. So like I said, anything with white lettering needs to be turned 
you know, the button needs to be switched. So let's click the shed lights. Let's click the master oxygen. We'll mess with these as we get closer to putting on the APU or after the APU is on. So let's click arm here. Let's go ahead and get our weights set up. According to sim brief, let's see what our list looks like here. We have 166 for the peoples. So let's go ahead and 166 here. Yeah, let me make sure we're still in kilograms. Uh, yep. All right. And our cargo is 4.1. Right, and our fuel is 12.8. Uh, let's just say 13. Just round up. Our gross weight is 110.5, and here it's 117, but that's okay because there's a 7,000 kilogram difference between this zero fuel weight and what our zero fuel weight is showing in sim brief. All right, that's all done. Navigation should just be about finished. Let's contact the ATC, get clearance for uh, parting. Landing altitude is like 54 50, I believe, from the last flight. So 54, let me look at it again. I think that's what it was last time around. Yeah, 54 34, so that's close enough there. All right, is. There we go. Now nav is lined up. We can put our flight plan in. All right. Let's go ahead and click KSAN. Leave. Which one are we taking off on again? Which, oh, we're taking off on runway high. I hope that doesn't mess up our departure. Let's, uh, our runway here. Runway 9 is not being used this morning. All right, we can't do that. Hmm. Let me look at our... Uh... We're taking off on runway 9. Uh, we're just going to stick with runway 27. I guess. Let me uh, let me look at one thing real quick with our with our flight plan here. Let me see what's available from runway nine. Runway nine. this happen here all right looks like we can do this one here all right we're okay all right so let's go to runway nine actually and we will do this departure 
And Meatball is going to be our... Right there. Let's go down here. Let me bring up OFP again. Finish plugging in our play plan. All right, we got EED. And EED, we are taking the airway, so let's get the airway up. We're taking J236 to TBC. And TBC, we are. We're picking up from TBC, we're picking up our arrival, so we can we don't need to put another waypoint in just yet. Alright, we are doing ILS 34 right. I was thinking about doing an RNAV landing, but since it's really bad weather there, it's been really bad weather off and on today, so uh, you know we're gonna stick with the ILS that way we can still land. It's really tough to do an RNAV landing when you can't see the runway. You know, in the uh, at the amount of feet that you're supposed to be able to see it. So, all right, let's go. P bar three and snips and insert. All right, very good. Let's get rid of any discontinuities. Let's get rid of this one. Let's check it out on our map here. Make sure we're good. Should be fine. Yep, we are good. All right, let's finish setting up our flight bag. You know, the tablet. I think that's called a flight bag. So our gross weight is 110.5. Let's plug that in first. 11.5. Runway length, we can click on this. That brings in the length. Runway heading is 106. Let's refresh the METAR. All right, let's click calculate. All right, very good. Now let's finish setting up the FMS. Finish setting that bitch up, and then uh, we'll be able to get out of here. So let's go back to in it. We got to go to the next page. Our fuel block is 13. Zero fuel weight is just about done. 97.5. So right, zero fuel weight. Yeah, 97.5. And our balance is 's all good let's go to takeoff and let's plug in our two V speeds we'll plug in the V2 speed on the autopilot once that gets fired up so 134 136 134 should have known something was up with that last flight when our airplane was like bucking like 
bucking like a Bronco when we were turning the engines on. All right, so that's all good. Let's get the APU fired up. Let's turn on this fuel tank. Wait a few seconds. Start. Put this bleed switch. Actually, now that the IRS is lined up, we can turn on all six of these switches. We can only do this after the IRS lines up. All right, let's see here. We have a heading of 106. Two speed we'll put in as 165. I usually do 15 knots over whatever's published. And our flex speed is 59. So let's do that. Good. Let's, uh, what else we need to do? Plug in negative five for decision height. Since we're taking off. Hey, we need to adjust the METAR as well. Let's do that. And we got 1023. Oops, wrong button. on sim brief 30.22 all right i believe our apu is good and alive now yep all right so now we can turn off the external power and we can get ready to back up let's turn on all the fuel pumps now. We can get rid of the white lettering. All right, let's see which way we need to back up. Oh man, the runway's right there. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's back up going that way. So let's get the cart connected. Get rid of the chocks. Get rid of the GPU unit. Start backing up. Strengths with altitude during our takeoff. Now we just need to be above 10,000 feet by a certain. Nope. No constraints. We just need to be above certain altitudes at certain points, but that's no big deal. All right, let's turn our nose. Oh, wrong way, Greg. I, always, I, I do that so often. I always get that mixed up, man. I for, sometimes, well, because some planes is from, like the direction is from behind and some it's from in front. So it makes it a little difficult for me to always remember. All right, let's crank up the first engine.
good. We can stop here. Let's get our trim again. That's 0.8 up. All right, let's put the parking brake back on. Let's adjust our trim to 0.8 up. It's pretty close right now. All right, that's good. Put on our weather system. transponder let's put this to above since we're taking off let's crank up the second engine All right, let's uh, let's get ready to go. Let's see if there's any potholes on this runway. All right, we got that. We got that. We got that. We got taxi. Turn off our APU now. So let's turn that off and let's turn that off else is good. All right, let's uh, put our flat. Oh, yeah, let's test our takeoff configuration. Once the slats and flaps get down. All right, so let's release the parking brake. Push this button here. All right, no noise coming from that, so that means we are good. So let's roll out. Autobots roll out. I wasn't sure which Frontier livery to do, so I'm using this Wolf one. Last, last name of Wolf in my family, so the one with the eagle is really cool too, but I don't know. I don't, I didn't. Does it, does it really matter which one we chose, but I don't know. I thought that one was pretty cool looking, so. get up here and adjust some of the lighting and then let the ATC give us clearance Have and 
profile. some juice the toga oh come on with the bouncing let's go bitch Almost there, baby. Yassi! Gear up, bitch. Not gear up. We can take off. Now we can put gear up. We'll hold manual control for a little bit. until we get over 1,500 feet. All right, let's click autopilot. Let's lock our landing gear. Turn the brake fans off, but now they're off. really overcast in California today. Look at that. It was like that around my way all day yesterday. Just overcast and foggy. And it's pretty cool, though, with the mountains in the background. We get to cruising altitude and we're going straight. We'll speed up the simulator. go 
go. Lights are all cleaned up. this so I can keep track of everything. It's cool looking. I like that. We're on our way to 37,000 feet. Then we'll speed up the simulator twice. Two times speed. cruising a little, a little smoother, a little quicker, actually. Turn you off. Get ready and switch the METAR over to standard pressures. standard pressure and that adjusts all three I believe Finally in the air. Hour and 30 minutes. Crazy. Crazy. Motherfucking crazy.
use the ATC now where I wasn't using it before. I'm using it now because outside of uh, one airport, outside of flying to Amsterdam early this morning, every airport I've tried it with so far has worked, where if you use the ATC and you get on the ground and you, uh, you, know, you click on taxi to the gate, every time I've done it, except for that one landing a few hours back in Amsterdam, there's been an air marshal there with his glow sticks telling us to go left or right and then making that X, you know, letting us know that we are that we need to stop. And then he puts his right arm, like crosses, does something with his right arm in some position. And, it, you know, that's, for, I guess, for us to put our parking brake on, I guess, or shut down engines or whatever. Very cool that uh, you can have that that bit of realism. Icing range, so let's go ahead and there's some anti-ice going. any other de-icing things. And we have alternate or normal for the mode. Other than that, there's really nothing else to click on. I'll be right back. We'll let this continue to climb. I need to go visit another room in the house for about a minute. Check my ring doorbell. Check its health. Ooh, right on the cusp. Let's reboot it. The Wi-Fi signal is not very strong where my ring doorbell is, so periodically I reboot it, and that seems to really help the signal strength. When the signal strength is in green, I get all the notices. You know, somebody at my door or something like that. When it's not in green and it's in that white status, which is like, eh, kind of 
Wi-Fi signal, eh, not great. Then uh, I don't really get a lot of the notices. So. We can turn off the anti-ice now. It's not saying we're in icing range anymore. All right, we can turn off continuous relight. And what are we heading here? 36 it looks like 37 so let's turn this to 37 all right let's see here m m yep all right let's go back to device cells and see what it says now oh it made it worse oh shit <laughs> i've never had that happen before Anytime I've rebooted it, it's always got better. Let's try rebooting it one more time. And if not, no big deal. All right, let's go ahead and switch this to progress. And we'll switch this one to flight plan for now. Because I want to have this here so I can see how many miles to our descent. So let's go ahead and increase our speed so we have one and two times so now we're in two times speed as you can see we're going quite faster now and the mileage is clicking down not as fast as uh sim brief i mean as a uh, uh as the pm the dg 737 that one you can do 8x very, very easily. And the system works really good. I'll take 2x. That made it a little better, 62. That's crazy, I've never rebooted the ring doorbell and had the signal strength drop. Usually it gets much better. When we get closer to the top of our descent, we need to plug in our wind speeds and all that kind of stuff for Denver. You know, we got to go to a descent forecast here and update that. Right. And when we get closer to EED, we're going to go back to regular speed. I don't really trust this base version that Microsoft has of the sim rate increase. I don't really trust it with turns. Five miles to our turn, and then we're gonna go back to regular speed here very soon. The radar is still, uh, let's go to back to map. That's right, we have sectionals now. That's right, I forgot about that. Ready to pull up on Bullhead City, Arizona. Oh shit. Let's go back to regular speed. Nice. And twice back. All right, we should be in regular speed now. Eagle Airfield. And there's still snowstorms over Denver, so we're going to keep the ILS landing right now. 
according to the radar on Navigraph, the radar for the, the weathers, it looks like it's still kind of very snowy out there. Yeah, man, I forgot that now they have these sectionals in America now. Navigraph just uh, gave us the capability of looking at, like, the VFR, like, sectional charts now. Uh, for At least for the U.S. right now. We weren't, ab we weren't able to do that for a long time. That was not available. You used to have to go to, like, Sky Vector and look them up that way. Sky Vector is still a really good website. It's just the only thing with Sky Vector, it only does, at least the free version of Sky Vector only allows you to, you know, look up charts and things like that for the United States. I'm not sure if it does, like, Hawaii or Guam or Alaska or Puerto Rico, you know, some of the other states that we have and uh, territories, but All right, we're just about wings level again. There we go. Now we can increase our speed again. So let's go once and twice. And now we're in 2x again. And that's a heading of 51. Good. So the mileage is clicking down somewhat fast. Like a mile, like every second and a half, it looks like. I'm not really sure what increasing it like three times would do. I don't know if that would be bad, bad or not. So we'll just leave it on two times. I haven't had anything bad. I mean, not one. This fake wood next to me. This MDF wood. Knock on wood, I haven't had anything uh, bad happen to me doing 2x speed. But when you start increasing it past that, you know, bad things can happen. The auto pilot can kick off, the plane can roll over. Like, I've had, I've had weird issues in the past with going too fast. I mean, which makes sense, but I mean, if you're going to allow us to increase the sim rate, it would be nice if you got rid of all the turbulence and drops in altitude. Just deactivate all that, let us speed up, and then when we go back to regular speed, then those things can just reactivate automatically. That would be nice. Got about 500 miles to the top of our descent. Swan Ranch Upper Headquarters. I wonder what that is. go one more click forward and see what happens. I don't want to I don't want to crash the simulator.
Whoa, whoa, whoa. T-bar is 20,000, and M-mark is, yep, and Devin is 15, that's correct, Kush is at 14,000, that's correct, uh, Lodora is good, We need to get rid of any waypoints. Push. No, Ladora is the beginning of our. Okay, Ladora, thirteen thousand. Two ten. That's correct. Be free is mandatory. Ten thousand. All right, good. Yeah, we look like it looks okay. I was just checking the uh, the altitudes we need to be at by certain points. We're good. We only got 385 miles left. The beginning of our descent. We're doing pretty good. when this flight's over. My power went out here at the house last night for, I guess, like two hours. I was right before I was getting, I was getting ready to do a, like the last flight of the evening. I did a PC-12 flight in Alaska to Fairbanks, and then I did a, a Bay 146 flight. And right when I was getting ready to start that flight, I'm sorry, I was doing this plane from Denver to Dallas last night. And as I was getting everything set up, the power went out. We got power back around, I guess, about 12.30 in the morning, close to 1 in the morning. And I wasn't really tired, so I was like, well, let me do another flight. So I just made up a flight using the KLM UK livery on the Bay 146. Do that thing from the Liverpool airport in England to Amsterdam. However, the screens went out in Amsterdam at, at 11,000 feet the screens went out and uh, I'm kind of leaning towards the fact now that it looks like all of like the continuous European countries like that whole block of countries you know Amsterdam uh, you know Brussels Belgium France Spain Austria uh, Italy, Poland, uh, you know, all those countries. It seems like every screen at the moment goes blank at some point, flying to or getting the plane set up or uh, just a little bit after being in the plane. It seems like that that's like a black hole now for screens. And I, I thought since I turned the world you know, the world updates, like I did not install any of the scenery for this. Uh, that's fixed a lot of the issues. But I think those screens in, in Europe, next time, uh, you know, I'll have to try it one day without live weather and without live time and without the photogrammetry turned on, which that just gives us the capability of... Uh, turning the cities into these big 3D buildings. When photogrammetry is turned on, it uses a lot more data, but it makes the buildings and the cities and shit look a lot more realistic because it's like a much better 3D, you know, 
rendering of uh, this, those images. Still in 2x speed. Making pretty good timing. It did start. This number started around 600 and 60 something when we started the 2x deal. So that's what we got going on right now. We'll switch it back to regular speed as we get probably about 30 miles away from top of our descent unless we start making turns and then I'll turn off the the increase sim when uh you know before we make any turns right. I'm kind of losing my uh I'm kind of losing my train of thought as I'm talking I'm so tired right now Ooh. we got weathers there's weather on the map now Turn the weather brightness up a little bit. I think it's awesome that weather shows up in this airplane. It showed up in the Bay 146 last night, too. I have never seen weather show up on that screen. There's a big weather screen, like down in here down in this area on the bay 146 and i've never seen weather show up there but last night it sure enough did Two X for a long time. Those are really tall storm clouds. Good lord. Maybe they're getting thunder snow down there. Good Lord. Amazing how these mountains were formed over millions or thousands of years. It's crazy that you know, there's a, a belief out there. I think it's backed by study as well, but I mean, by science as well, that a lot of these striations and grooves in these mountains and the way they look it was due to like a tremendous amount of water cutting the rock as the water was going from like the arctic region going down that you know like at one point all this was underground and a lot of these striations on the mountains were formed from the initial water pressure of the uh, arctic kind of melting a little bit there's global warming millions of years ago. It's it's kind of kind of what the Earth does. It goes through cycles. I'm glad we're not flying over there. That's a lot of yellow. Bad news bears over there. All right, we're getting closer. 150 miles.
Oh shit. Um, it's our top of descent here. Rearm profile. And let's see here. We got to go down to 20,000 feet. I had to open my eyes when I did. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> I almost fell asleep just now. than we should be. Oh yeah, we are. Let's uh Oh fuck it, we're fine. Let's just continue. We got plenty of time to get down to twenty thousand feet. We still have forty miles. Let's program in the ILS information. So that is course of three fifty three. One eleven eleven. One eleven ten, actually. All right, so that's all good. Still kind of high. Let's uh, put on some speed brake. If that'll help us get our vertical deviation more in line. there now so let's click profile release this now let's see if we can stay at our piece right now starting to speed up let's put our speed brake back on a little bit this is completely my fault i had my i closed my eyes by accident because i'm so tired and uh before i knew it we were at our top of descent i wasn't paying attention so trying to get this cleaned up now a little bit right, our decision height is 100 our information out. Uh, we never did plug in our descent winds and shit. It's too late for that now, actually. Less drag. Okay. I think it is too late for that. Yep. 
That's what I thought. All right, no worries. Whatever. Can't give you any any more less drag than what I've given you, buddy. in a little bit and all right that's good let's bring this down to 17,000 feet now now I'm certain starting to be awake now <laughs> I'm awake now now that we're doing shit get our METAR information out our screen stay up the whole time unlike the last flight it's really difficult to land this plane without the instruments because they're pretty much all digital the ones that we need to land a plane bay for the bay 146 that was no big deal because i already had the frequencies and the course program so when everything went out i still had all the analog equipment to you know direct me to landing Cloudy over Colorado. I bet. You, I wonder if all these mountains, Aspen, Telluride, and all them, are getting just bunches and buckets of snow right now. Oh man, it is so awesome being on a big ass ski slope, big ass ski mountain with fresh powder. God, it's so good. never been out west to go skiing but i used to go up to northern new york a lot and i used to go to, to killington vermont and i went there every year for like a two week almost a two week two weeks at a time i did that probably five or six years sometimes it was always with my friends from high school sometimes we'd bring our girlfriends sometimes we wouldn't uh but um yeah man i mean the drive was a killer man that was like I think it was like a 10 hour drive, I think. I don't know. Was, I mean, because you're going all the way up into Vermont. But yeah, man, once we got there, we had, we, we always rented like uh, one of these condos right like on the bottom of the ski slope. And, yeah, man, was, God, Killington was so much fun. You could, you could take the gondola all the way up top, which is like, I think like 10,000 or 12,000 feet. And you could literally spend all day just going down that one time go all the way up to the top and you can there's so many trails and things to stop at and like you know little little shacks to kind of warm up in because a lot of times when you're up that high especially in winter time it's like you know negative negative frostbite like i don't remember the temperature but i i do remember that if we had anything exposed for more than a couple of minutes it was going to get frostbitten so we had to have everything completely covered the gondola ride was long too man that shit that thing was i don't remember how long it was man. It, it took a while to get up to the top of that mountain what do we have going on here b devon thousand feet okay, we need to okay we are slowing down now thousand feet right now that's our next stop
13,000 feet there, so... And Kush is our... Okay, so let's bring up... Kush is the last actual waypoint on the arrival chart. Eldor is a mandatory 13,000 feet. And then we got to get down to 10,000 by B free. Okay, what's our METAR information? Uh, let's update this. And we got 111, it's 2987 according to sim brief, so let's change that. Oh, we got to do our uh, got to do our approach information. All right. We have uh, 100, actually the RD is 155, so let's do that. All right, very good, so that's all done. Let's plug in our descent height, our decision height here is 100. down to 10,000 feet by the time we get to push. I'm sorry, by B free. And we should probably extend some flaps to try to keep us at speed here. Let's put the parking, I mean the air brake back there. Let's go ahead and turn on the auto brakes. In Eldora, we needed to be at, yeah, we need to go VS mode. This is bullshit. Let's go ahead and what heading are we getting ready to be at? Three fifty something. Heading mode. Let's switch this to ILS. Let's click VL localizer. Let's switch our heading. Back out a little bit. Our glide scope capture point is 7,000 feet, so let's drop this down to 7,000.
localizer is captured. That's excellent news. Blow our flaps one more time. And I think we will do our own speed from here on out. little bit of time. Not much. the capture. I mean for the glide scope to show up. All right, let's put on some lights. speed again, what is it, 145, 133, so let's say 138, I'll say. capturing a glide scope here pretty soon, I would think. Unless we missed it. it actually. Now it should be right around here actually. According to the arrival chart it should be uh The arrival chart, we should have captured the glide scope like right around here. Right, well, 
let's see what happens. Definitely too uh, too snowy and foggy to do a RNAV landing, that's for sure. Glide script. Okay. Here comes the glide scope. Oh, you know, we could have done an RNAV landing actually. It's not too bad right in front of the airport here. Set for a category three landing. Wide scope is now captured. So when we get on the ground, we can contact the uh, ground and get taxied so we can see if the guy with if our air marshal is going to be there or not. airport a couple of times man this airport is huge it's got to be massive to have uh, you know all the underground bunkers that the government has underneath of it so when we get hit by an asteroid one day or a comet you know they can go in their little bunkers under here and restart civilization I mean, it's kind of a, a myth, but maybe there's some truth to it about the, you know, the government having a bunch of bunkers underneath this airport. There's a lot of symbolism of, like, demonism. Or something like that. stop on the runway, but 
kind of what happened. symbolism in this airport of like demons and um, other organizations that have supposed ties to like anti-religion and that kind of stuff. I mean, there's some really creepy really creepy like symbolism here at this airport God damn it give me a second here hello All right, I'm back. It's my son's birthday today. My, my mom was calling to check in on him. All right, let's uh, turn off the iPad. Taxi to the gate. And see if we got our little rave man with the sticks. I guess it's now we can put this on taxi and turn the landing lights off. happy the screens stayed on the whole time that makes me happy that kind of makes up for uh san francisco airport today having potholes in the runway another flight started out pretty good today and then as soon as we got rolling on the uh the runway in san francisco uh the plane hit a invisible pothole and nosed the right into the ground
taking a hell of a tour of this airport. What's up, truck? Plane there, so I wish I had like a, a throttle lever where I can like move the throttle with my hand instead of pushing A or B. It's really hard to control the amount of thrust with these two little buttons. Sometimes I tap, you know, tap the button and it goes up a lot. Sometimes I tap it, it doesn't go up that much. If I had like the, a throttle That'll be so much easier. Why do we have to come all the way around? Why couldn't we just go down and make a left at the other side of here and come in this way? I see our guy. Yep. How come he's not telling us to... ran over because he didn't tell us when to stop. I didn't mean to take a screenshot. Throttle levers up. Let me 
uh, go outside. I don't know if that guy's got his sticks crossed or not. No, see, he still doesn't have, so at some airports, at some airports, like, it should have been crossed already, guy. Like, right on the line. It's, if he still wants us to come forward. How are we supposed to go forward if we can't see you, darling? That's so stupid. Well, at least the person's there. Maybe they'll get that fixed at some point. That's not that big of a deal. All right, let's do our shutdown checklist. him auto completing everything oh I don't want him I just want to evaluate you completing it I just want you to evaluate all right fuck it we'll just complete everything ourselves
Uh, it's just doing everything. That's so stupid. I wonder why, like, when we are going for takeoff and get er everything set, it's like it doesn't auto complete everything. But now it's auto completing everything? That's, I don't like that. I don't want it to auto complete everything. All right. IRS is off. We can pick that item. Oxygen crew is crew oxygen is off. Exterior lights are all off. Okay. APU bleed is off. And let's up the GPU. This is off. Emergency lights disarm. And batteries off. So that's it. I wonder why the, uh, let's disconnect the ground power and see if that'll give us our log. I guess not. You know, like at the end of the flight, how it gives you like your flight log. All right, that's about it. I'm going to go take a nap. I will be doing another flight later. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Uh, it might not, it's probably going to be a, a smaller plane because we just did a 737 yesterday. We did a Dreamliner on Friday, and we did a, uh, what the hell is it called? Um, and we did this one just now. So I don't know. I might do uh, I might do the Mitsubishi MU2. We haven't done that in a while. I might do an ATR. That's always fun. Might do the Cessna, I mean the, uh, yeah, the CR, the SR-22 or uh, the Cessna Longitude. So we'll figure it out. But thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys being here. Be good to yourself. Be good to me. Click the thumbs up. Click the like. Do all that good shit. Help me out. I certainly do appreciate it. And uh, peace.